those of you who missed the last video, I have been working on over the past couple weeks building out a fully free and open source e-commerce site in Svelkit. And I'm actually gonna be putting this in production. I'm super excited. I'm actually gonna be using it. And uh, yeah, we've been building that out in Svelkit using stuff like Drizzle, Cloudinary, uh, Terso, Stripe, Resend, a bunch of other really awesome technologies that you're all familiar with. And we're gonna have a ton of different deep dives and stuff coming very soon. But as I've been working on this project, there have been a couple things I've run into in Svelkit land that I wanted to make some short videos kind of going over. So today I wanna talk about form actions and how I'm handling creating new products within the admin page I built. So this right here is our super basic little admin page. You can put in your product name, you can attach your Stripe product ID and your price ID. These are super, super important and it's gonna be the backbone of how we actually make all of this work. Uh, we're not gonna talk too much about that today. This is not about the actual site itself and more about the concepts within Svelte, but definitely if you're interested in this, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because we are going to have deep dives on how all this works coming in the near future. So we have these two here, we put in our price, put in our description, we can add some images. This is probably a great time to say um, this entire series is sponsored by Cloudinary. You're gonna be hearing that a lot because they're sponsoring this series. Um, I've been using them at work in production for over a year now. Really love their stuff. Uh, before I had even talked to them, I had planned this sort of big project out, was planning on using them anyway. But uh, they reached out to me and were like, hey, you wanna do something? And I was like, hey, you know, I'm building this whole thing. I was already using your guys' thing in it. Would you be open to sponsoring this? And they're like, yeah, sure. So really nothing's changed. Uh, I really like their stuff. The only difference is I get to pay rent now. So yeah, that's uh, always great. That's really the core of our um, creation page. Nothing too crazy here. But under the hood, there's some interesting stuff we're doing in here. Yeah. So this is the actual page itself within our code. The biggest thing we're doing here is we're print, uh, the biggest thing we're making here is the form. If, if you guys wanna see how all the routing and rendering stuff is working, check out the last video I just made. Basically, we're using layouts and nested layouts to create a really nice UI and a really nice system for actually fetching our data and creating these pages. So here, we're just creating our form. We'll talk about this use enhance later, but we're doing a couple sort of interesting things here. So first and foremost, we have our inputs. There's nothing too crazy here. The first thing you'll probably notice is that there's no state attached to our input. Most people come from a React background or any of these other frameworks, and you'll typically end up having to do like set the value and set the on change to attach to a state variable. And then when you submit the form, you pass those variables up or something along those lines. It's a very common pattern. There are often some nice form state management libraries you can use, but in this case, we're not using any of them. And if you've seen any of my previous Svelkit videos, you probably know why we don't need to use these things because we're gonna use forms, we're gonna use HTML forms as God intended to just actually post some data to the server and use the built-in form data that was there in the 90s, or at least I think it was there in the 90s, whenever they added form data. But we're just gonna use the actual form data here so we don't have to attach state to this, we don't attach it to this, we don't attach it to this. Our required buttons actually work because we're actually ut utilizing HTML forms the way they're supposed to be utilized. We hit create, yells at me to fill out the field. Uh, Remix also does this and it's really great. I think, uh, I need to rewatch it, but I made a video about Remix way back when. I said I really liked it and this was part of why I really liked it. And um, SvelteKit feels a lot like that just better in my opinion, but maybe we'll revisit uh, Remix at some point, we'll see. But yeah, so nothing too crazy here, we're just setting all of our different fields. So this is where the title of the video comes in, where I'm like, I don't know if this is brilliant or stupid, I haven't seen this before, but I also, this isn't the most common thing I've ever seen. I've never really seen this before, but it seems to me to be a really clean way of handling things. Um, what we need to do within this UI is we need to be able to upload multiple images. So when I hit upload, we need to be able to go in here, um, go to my desktop, um, go here and yeah, let's just upload this screenshot or whatever. We need to be able to upload as many of these as we want. So I'll go ahead and upload one. Let's go ahead and upload another one. If We do all these. So these two images have been uploaded to Cloudinary and now we have their IDs, but now we need to actually send these to our server. But remember I said earlier, we're not using state variables to send to our server. So we have to figure out a way to send these dynamic items and it's a list so we don't know how long it's gonna be so we can't create like empty, empty shells for it or whatever. So we have to figure out a way to send these to the server. And the way I ended up solving this problem was I created a little images array up here within state. Uh, very soon when Svelte 5 comes out, this will be denoted as state. But for right now within Svelte, this is just reactive state. 
So I went ahead in there, I created those images, and then every time we upload something to Cloudinary, when it says, okay, that was successful, we add this image to our images array, and then we print out all of these images, and the fancy thing we're doing is we're actually adding an input, a hidden input to the DOM. So if we ins inspect element over here, when you go in here, we inspect element, um, we go down in here to our image, and then you can see in here, we have our little hidden input of we have our little hidden input for that image. And what this is gonna do is whenever we submit our form, these images are now going to be attached to the form data and we can actually read these on the back end and save them into our database. So we're doing that here with our images and we're going even further and we're stringifying some JSON in here because I need to pass in the public ID, the width and the height because we wanna save all of that into our database because we wanna be able to then eventually print out our images while maintaining as much crispness and original aspect ratio as humanly possible. We'll talk more about that within the deep dive. So here, we just create all these images. We go ahead and we put all of these within the DOM itself. So we're basically using the DOM to store state, which feels kind of weird being growing up very React brained, but it works. Um, there is another way we could do this, and I'll show you that in a second. But we go ahead here, we have this, and then we have our submit button. Very simple stuff. Now, finally, if we go up here to our actual um, submit function, we're using progressive enhancement. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what progressive enhancement is, progressive enhancement is one of the coolest features that Svelte has where we can use forms in the normal way they're supposed to be, where like we attach them to a post request and when you hit submit, it'll send all the form data via a post request to that endpoint. We can do some stuff with it. But we're also adding in some extra stuff here where it won't necessarily go through and redirect you to that page and do some stuff. We can manually set all of that stuff. So within this use enhance function, we can go ahead and put in up here, we can add stuff that's happening before we actually submit the, um, we can put stuff in here which will run before we actually submit the form to the server. So if I wanted to, I could add to the form data here. We, could, we can go ahead and add the form data in here, put stuff within our form data and send that to the server. So another way we could handle these images is we could add this images array to our form data when we go ahead and submit. Now. I don't think that there's a huge difference in performance or runtime or anything like that between doing it in either different way. To me, it seems kind of nice that we would have it in the DOM so we don't have to do any JS or array manipulations on form submit. It's just all right there and can be sent up very quickly and easily. So that's the way I did it here. But if you want to see a way to do it another way, I have this little example repo, which I'll link down below which shows you how you can do like append to the form data before the submit and then all of this will show up on the back end. So with all that said, let's go ahead and put some basic information in here. So let's just do video uh, product. Uh, here we should put in actual IDs, but I don't have any right now. So we're just gonna put in fake stuff right now. Uh, again, we'll talk about this in the deep dive. Make sure you're subscribed for that because that'll come out over the next couple weeks. Uh, basic description in here. We've got our images uploaded. Now we can go ahead and actually create our product. Let me show you what the create form action actually looks like. So here within our page.server, we have our actions and our default action. Uh, obviously you can have named actions and stuff, but here I'm just doing the default. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull out our form data. So remember we were setting form data on the front end. We can now pull that out on the back end. And I'm using a package here called um, Zod Form Data. I think this was originally meant to be a remix package. Uh, that's where I've seen it used mostly, but it works really great here for SvelteKit too, because both of them utilize the basic web standards of form data and make it way easier for us to pull this data out. Because normally we'd have to do data and then we'd have to run data.get on each of the different keys and we'd have to do all this stuff and a bunch of type checking. It gets really messy and heavy and boilerplate and crap. So what we do in here instead is we can now just define Zod schemas. If any of you have ever used TRPC, you've used Zod and you probably know just how amazing this package is, especially in TypeScript. We can go ahead and define schemas for everything. So the core schema we're defining right here is this base schema down here. Remember, we have name, Stripe price ID, Stripe product ID, price, description, etc. You can see here that they match one to one to all of the names that we're setting on the front end. That's the key. We set name equals Stripe product ID. On the back end, it's going to be Stripe product ID. So that's how that stuff works there. Then we get a little fancier here and we set up our images. So remember, we created, we were printing out all of those different images, and down here, 
we were setting the name of all of these to be images. So all of these are named images. We will have like right here in this example, we're gonna have two different um, inputs that are named images. So we can call that a repeatable. This uh, library has a really nice wrapper for that. So we can say images is repeatable of type. And then we can go even further and we can say zfd.json and pass in the image schema. Because remember what I told you guys, we're stringifying this information here we can pull that out right here and it'll just parse it for us. It's super, super nice. So we go ahead and set all this stuff in here. We say res equals safe parse in this stuff. We'll throw an error if it doesn't parse correctly. And then we can go ahead and actually save and insert the product. Again, we will discuss this much further within the deep dive. We're just using Drizzle here to insert some stuff into our database. Really nothing too crazy. And uh, yeah, with all that stuff there, we can just go ahead and once this is inserted, redirect back to the admin products page and see our new product created. Because remember, it's a different page, so it'll automatically refresh and refetch from our page.server. Remember, like I said, I have this full example repo. It will be linked down below. I mostly made it for myself just as a reference, but it's a really great example of how you can set up these form actions and a bunch of different edge cases that you might need. Adding more stuff to the form data is in here. Um, the return async so we can check what happened here. Um, whatever our result was. We can check if it was a failure, if it was a success, we can do some more manipulation down here. We have an example down here of using multiple hidden inputs. We have the submit button within our page.server we go through and we have an example of using ZFD to actually parse out our data, run all this stuff in here, and then you can utilize this however you feel. So this is a great little example I made mostly for myself, but again, you guys are welcome to use it. Link down below, free and open source as per always. And yeah, uh, let's go ahead and actually run this action. So we'll go ahead and hit create and then it runs instantly because we're using SQLite. And then we just go in here, video products. That's the one we just created. Works perfectly exactly as you would expect. So yeah, that's the basics of how I'm doing the form actions and stuff like that. It's super nice. It's one of my favorite features of Svelte is, or well, sorry, not Svelte, Svelte Kit is these sort of end-to-end -end, um, meta framework features. The form actions and the data loaders are just phenomenal. I love these two pieces and I think that's honestly been my favorite part of using this. Uh, it's the actual reactivity in language is neat. I'm not as crazy about like just let images being reactive as everyone else. I'm very excited for Svelte 5 and I have no problem with runes whatsoever. I know a lot of people do, but for me, I don't mind. Honestly, making this closer to React and reactivity is probably not even going to be a bad thing. I think that's ultimately going to make the industry easier to work in and work with, and I think it's all good. Um, but yeah, this stuff's really great. I highly recommend giving it a shot and trying it out. All this is linked down below, and make sure you guys subscribe because we will have much, much more content coming on this very, very soon. Several deep dives are coming on this whole thing, and yeah, hopefully we'll be done with this site very, very soon. And I hope to talk to you guys then. See ya.